In this video series, we're going to focus on ICE, specifically around MAB, utilizing identity-based networking services 2.0 on the Cisco switch, 802.1x with ETLS, and with that comes a lot of certificate services work and other Active Directory type configurations with group policy, etc. My goal in this video was to be able to take a brand new network with a brand new ICE deployment, something that probably already had Active Directory in place and for the sake of the lab certificate services uh, installed and configured and be able to bring ICE into the mix, profile endpoints with MAB, authenticate devices with 802.1x, start to finish. So for this lab, it's pretty simple. I have two ICE nodes that are virtual machines. I have a domain controller and I have the PC we're looking at here. The ICE nodes will be a complete new build. We'll go through the setup scripts, start to finish. Uh, certificate services, as I previously mentioned, is installed on uh, Active Directory on the domain controller. And we'll go ahead and configure the group policies and certificate distribution to the devices along the way. We'll also highlight ICE profiling and we'll look at how identity-based networking services allows ICE to identify numerous endpoint devices and allows us to create device types uh, so that they're profiled properly. I've got uh, HP printer, Cisco phone, Cisco access points, and some other devices that we'll play with here in the lab and look at just how those devices get classified. So I hope this is a good end-to-end -end scenario for anyone looking at a brand new ICE deployment and how it would really fit into their environment. In my lab, I've simply got one 3650 switch. We would look at this as a small kind of branch office in the box where this switch is pretty much doing everything. Uh, all of the layer 3 SVIs as well as the access layer ports. So in this first video, we're going to go ahead and start by preparing the switch. It's up here in the background and I am going to completely factory default it. We will throw on a very basic set of configurations that will allow it to simply be on the network. We'll be able to SSH to it and then go ahead and apply the rest of the identity-based networking services configuration so that it's ready to go when we stand up our ICE nodes. So in the background here, we're going to go ahead and break this. And I will pause the video once this guy boots back up. Okay, so our switch is booted back up here. Um, I went ahead and said no to the initial config, terminated auto install, let it uh, finish spitting out all of its uh, config here. And again, we're going to apply a very basic configuration to this that will include VLANs and uh, SVIs, uh, routing, static routing, that sort of stuff, just to get this online connected and ready to go for our IBNS configurations. A couple of VLANs that are going to exist here that are safe to completely ignore uh, in my lab, they do other things outside of the scope of this video, are VLAN 200, uh, 1222, and 1223. So you'll see that config in here, uh, but know that it has no bearing on the lab. So we'll start to throw in this configuration here. Oh, 
all of my VLANs. Uh, and again, so VLAN 50 is our um, VLAN that both uh, our primary ICE node uh, and our Active Directory domain controller live in. 51 will be the VLAN that our secondary ICE node lives in. VLAN 99 is a transit VLAN to an untangled firewall that allows us internet access. And the ports I will need are 1048 that just connects to a lab switch and again is uh, only including those VLANs that we can ignore so nothing to worry about on this port. 111 connects up to our firewall VLAN 99 and 112 connects over to my lab here where this machine that I'm recording on as well as ICE and the domain controller are running. Our SVIs for the relevant VLANs. Default route. Basic SNMP and NTP. At this point, we should have access to the internet and to our domain controller. So that takes care of our initial config. So moving on, we'll start to put in some of the identity-based networking services, radius configuration, etc. that we'll need for ICE later. I'm going to quickly put in a uh, set of credentials so that I can SSH to this switch rather than running at the console here. So the rest of this config is pretty lengthy, um, contains a lot of policy map, class map, device sensor information, uh, everything involved in IBNS. I am not going to go over that in detail and walk through uh, what each of the commands do and why we're using them, etc. Um, I will, however, uh, link to a couple of websites, and kudos to these guys, uh, all credit where credit is due. They have uh, some amazing templates uh, for identity-based networking services and walk through a lot of this data. So uh, ice-support.com and uh, networkwizkid.com. Uh, uh, again, I'll put those uh, links in the, the videos or in the video below here once I post it. Uh, but some great information if you really, uh, you know, obviously want to dig in and understand what all the different commands do and why we have them. Um, but for the sake of uh, time and this video, uh, I'm probably going to be pasting most of them in. I'll call out a few uh, here and there um, as I put them in. So first. We have to convert to new style. If you're running, I think, 92, 9300 switches, this is a default. Uh, but for uh, my 3650 that I'm using here, uh, that needs to be done. Create my radius servers and my radius server group for ICE. A whole bunch of radius server uh, VSA and attribute information. Sourcing my radius uh, request from VLAN 50 all of my method lists and the dynamic author information for the radius servers, a bunch of access lists that we need, spanning tree, BPDU guard and filter, dot uh, 1x uh, requirements, DHCP snooping information, a whole bunch of device sensor information, service templates, a bunch of class maps, a huge policy map, RS 
our switch port templates. And one thing about the identity-based networking, um, you know, depending on what switch and uh, iOS or iOS XE version you're running, some of the commands may not even exist. Uh, some of them may be different, right? Spanning tree port fast versus spanning tree port fast edge, etc. So uh, again, one of them in here, uh, this command simply isn't even available um, on the 3650. I just didn't take it out of the template here. And our device tracking information. This policy disables device tracking on trunk ports which I will need to go in at the end here and add to those three ports we configured earlier. And then I broke up the switch into three sections. Um, as with most ICE deployments, we would start off in somewhat of a monitor mode, uh, just making sure everything's working properly, uh, move into a low impact mode, and then ultimately a closed mode uh, where if you're not authing right, etc., you're definitely not getting on um, in the lab here, I'm going to be working closed mode only for the sake of making sure that, hey, this is all working as it should in a full-blown deployment. So ports 1 through 12 are the monitor mode. 13 through 24 are the low impact mode. And then... 25 through 36 are the closed mode. And then interface range 10 gigabit Ethernet 1048, 10 gigabit Ethernet 111, and 2. We will need to add that device tracking. And I'll make sure that's on there too for trust. So that takes care of our identity-based networking config. Again, I didn't dig into a lot of this. There's a lot of config there. Uh, again, the websites I mentioned uh, have a lot of good information about that.